I would say love is apparent from birth to the majority of humans, right? You're born into love. There's a few circumstances. Let's not worry about the odd. Let's, let's think about the masses, right? So it's like we, we are here to love and be loved. That is it. And somewhere along the way in our journey, we lose our way. And part of that is in America, love is more about romanticism, right? Rom-coms, Valentine's Day, roses and chocolates. And like those are, those are gifts. Those are acts of service. That is showing that you love someone, yes, but more in the romantic sense. The dictionary says it's a strong feeling of affection. Mm. Does that sound like the definition of love? <laughs> No. My name is Ashanti and welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast, where men get real. Men of all ages and backgrounds come to this space to talk about these masks we wear. The masks that we describe is thinking about the front of the mask or the things that we gladly let the world see. The back of the mask, the things that we don't talk about as much. Today, sharing his mask is Ruben Rojas. Uh, Today, like, I want you to know, like, the episode you're going to hear right now is today is Ruben's birthday. So the day before Valentine's Day, the day of love. And love is such a huge part of this episode. Maybe you can think about who you love. I mean, when when they think about Ruben, Ruben and not only his bio, but all of the work he's been doing, it all started with love. You know, he traded his 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 suit in for a paintbrush. He began transforming blank walls into canvases. I'm going to read some of the bio because it's such a beautiful kind of words. And I don't know if, for those of you around the world who've seen his work, but love is the basis. I've seen his mural in Oakland that has been, um, I've driven by it many times and I've always been driving to like capture it. But it said, love me before I'm gone. And I remembered the words. I just had never caught on to all the elements behind the words. It's a post-it note on an earth. And the earth is saying, love me before I'm gone. Love, love, love. Man, I'm really excited that you're going to hear Ruben talk about his own mask today. As an artist, as a man who changed his career to decide that I'm going to pursue my heart with the element of love being at the theme of it. Today, the messages provided by these murals are uplifting communities all over the world to create public and new dialogues. As an artist, muralist, and designer, Ruben's mission is to inspire others to live through love. Using the urban landscape as his canvas, Ruben encourages communities to change for the better through optimism and collaboration. These once vacant walls, now vibrant reminders that inspire those who see them to dream big, feel beautiful, live in possibility, and to love. He got one in Oakland, New York, from Florida to Mississippi. Um, He's a TEDx speaker. Look, all those things are in the bio, but I want you to just know the essence of his work. Like when I drove by this mural just the other day again, it it was like all all the more of the elements came out. Like I knew the words, love me before I'm gone, because I thought about it in so many ways of not only the young people we work with, but the young men who we work with and who... And people in our lives who have moved on too fast, who have left too soon, love me before I'm gone. Maybe you're thinking who you're telling that to. Maybe you've been asking, reaching out, connecting. Maybe there's some love uh, gap in your own soul right now. I don't know where it is for you. I can tell you for me personally, and you hear me talk about it in this episode, grief is a heavy one. And so you're going to hear me talk about some grief things that I'm carrying. But man, so great to be in this conversation with Ruben Rojas. We we have made uh, several attempts to get this conversation going, and I'm so glad. It's perfect timing that we get to release this episode on the day of his birthday. If you haven't seen one of his murals, go check out his work. Um, we are so excited that you get to meet Ruben Rojas through the Taking Off the Mask podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey with us, folks. You can make your mask at millionmask.org. And please enjoy today's episode. We'll see you soon. Ruben Rojas, welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast. So glad to have you. Thanks for having me, Ashanti. Appreciate it. Before we could record it, you told me about this piece of art that you have 
in Oakland, and I'm so excited to go see it now again with new eyes in the downtown area. To remind me what the quote says on the wall, on the big wall, it's like 10-story qu- uh, painting. It says, love me before I'm gone. Yeah. Mm. How powerful, how powerful. Yeah, I'm a, it's a I'm post-it looking- note on planet Earth. Mm. But it, it's, it's, it's the Earth telling us, hey, love me now before I'm gone. But it also applies to us at the end of the day. Love ourselves before we're gone. Love our family before we're gone. Love our friends before we're gone. If you know the quote, Memento Mori, telling us about our mortality and that death is imminent. I've, I've kind of remixed it with Memento Amori. It's not total proper. It's more slang, but it's remember that we will die. So remember to love. What language is that? Latin. Mm, memento Lori. Lori? Mori. Mor- memento Mori. 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 Okay. Mm. I think that's so critical. I mean, definitely in this season of my own life, um, I'm excited to get in this conversation. I'm, I'm carrying some grief right now. And so I think uh, there's a song. There's, have you heard of a song from a guy named Kyle Hume? It says, um, if I would have known, I'm not a singer. If I would have known that you wouldn't be here anymore, I would have made the moments last. A little longer. That's the only line I know. So I'm not. A- it's, it sounds familiar. We should definitely look it up. <laughs> I feel like I feel like my wife's using the song on an Instagram story or something with yeah, her yeah. son. It's like powerful. one of those it's tear jerkers. Yeah. And I'm sitting there just looking at him and I'm crying. That's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way I think it's like 45 million uses. I don't know. It's like it's like one of those. It was it, one of those that went absolutely viral. And I, I don't know why I decided to sing right now. I don't even sing. That's a. What, what was it? You definitely don't. What you heard me say is not what you're going to hear. Not what you're going to hear when you, you. That's a good example of taking off the mask. You're like, I'm not a singer. I'm going to let it rip. Who cares what I look and sound like? Because trust me, I don't sing either. So I feel it. I know. I know <laughs> what you're saying. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. So the math. <laughs> what was I thinking? I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually, in my mind, I'm saying I've only done that like when I'm by myself. Like the fact that I'm, uh, I'm doing that out loud actually is a. Uh, okay. Here we go. We're that's in a funny. safe space. We're in a safe, We're in a safe space, space, Ashanti. I free appreciate that. I appreciate it. And I think so. There's, there's this guy, this rapper named Dax, who has a song. I don't know why we're talking about a lot of music right now, but. It, the end of his song says, um, it's called Eternity. It says, um, are you giving more than you're taking on this planet? And then he says, and if it were to all end right now, what are you holding on to that you need to let the world see? And I think it's connected to that mm. quote, like, love me before I'm gone. And I think that sometimes I feel like I'm maybe holding back stuff of my ta- of my goals and dreams and tomorrow's not promised, you know? So it's connected to that, around that as well. Yeah. Connected to the earth. Um, you know, we're here to talk about these masks. And so, so I think we're going to make these masks on a live. And you got a piece of paper there uh, that you're going to work on. I have a piece of paper here. We're going to, like, use the two sides of the paper. Yeah? So fold so it in think- half? Yeah. So we're going to just use the left side and right side. The left side we're going to consider as, like, the front of the mask. And then the right side, we're going to like represent the back of the mask. So the first step is just to draw a picture. You don't have to draw your most epic picture. We're going to maybe make a two minute and a half, two minute picture and just draw a mask. Like whatever you would think represents a mask for you today on the left side, we'll draw a mask. You're a lefty too. I'm a lefty. Right on. I just saw you lefty. Yeah, Yeah. Right on. Because you do, you do that, that big mural, is art your primary work or is, do you do art for fun or is it like um, just something you do on the side? Or This is what I do full time for a living. Uh, art. I just say artist now because, there, you know, if we're talking about masks, we're talking about labels. Sometimes we add mm. too many labels. I'm, I'm all about mm. like the only label we should have is human. I'm a human. Mm. You're a human. Let's let's get there. Yeah. Then get to know each other. And if you want to add some spices and make that recipe, you know, you want some curry or some fried chicken or whatever you want on that thing. Uh, a paella, like, go ahead, add all that. Teach me, inform me. But I think sometimes we lead too much with all these labels and all of a sudden I'm like, mm, okay, so you kind of told me everything. What do mm. I ask now? 
So in the case of an artist and listening to Rick Rubin and just owning it, you know, I do murals, I do sculptures, I do clothing, I, I write poems, I write writing a book, I do a podcast, I've got music on iTunes, I'm not a musician, but am I like, I'm not a musician, I'm not a rapper, but I got two hip hop songs on iTunes mm. with obviously my musician rapper homies. So yeah, I think when we pigeonhole ourselves into a corner, so that's it, I'm just, an, I'm an artist. That's it. Excellent. Oh. That's exciting, man. That's exciting. I am. Um, I appreciate that context. I think. I think when I talk to like youth, and I'm always trying to, in our mentoring work, it's like, you know, what, what, what is your vision? What's your dream? And they're like, well, I don't know. I think I want to do this. And I want to do that. And I'm just like, well, how about you just start, try something? Like, don't don't wait till you're 18 and just then try and think I'm gonna figure it out when I'm 18. How about you just start dabbling in some of the stuff you're interested in right now? You know. And I really encouraging them to like not get stuck, you know, not not get stuck. So this is the mask. You have a picture, and then so now on that same side where the mask is, which is the left side, what I'd like you to do is write three words or phrases that are qualities of yourself that you gladly let the world see. What are three qualities or characteristics of you that you talk about a lot or you share with people freely? That goes on the left side. Anywhere on the left side. Yeah, I'm at three right now. All right. That's all you need, three. Okay, so that's the front of the mask. And now the back of the mask, which is going to be on the right side of the paper, is what are, you don't need a picture on the right side. You just need a, or three words. What are three words or phrases that are things that you don't talk much about? Maybe, I mean, we're going to talk about those today. So, but the things that you don't talk much about, but that you may, um, that you don't share much. Maybe that you be, maybe you want to, but you haven't been able to. But these are three things that, you don't talk as much about. Hmm. How was that? How was that? Uh, one was very clear. Okay. <laughs> was it easy to do? Was it hard? Was it a something you think about or talk about a lot? Or I mean, these these topics. I mean, the... we could totally unpack this stuff. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to go first, or you want me to go first? You want to? We'll share front. We'll share front, and then we'll. We'll share the back. You go first. Show me the way. Show me the way. Oh, man. Well, this is just, you know, this is a conversation. So it's not where it goes where it's going to go. I have a question. I have a question. Is, yeah. your, is, this, is this an ever evolving, changing mask with phrases? Yeah. I, um, I, I've, in the early days of the show, I would just, I would make it in advance. And then my, the producer um, the, said, how about you try and make it like right before the show starts so that you don't, because I, cause I, I use similar words, right? I've made hundreds of masks before in this mm -hmm. work. And so it's like, oh, yeah, I'm probably using the same similar words over and over again. Not intentionally, just because I go into habit mode. And so now, since you and I made it live today, I got to use what's really real right now, which are, yeah, and I've drawn it. Every, every, every show, I've drawn a new mask. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely drawn hundreds of them here. So it's, it's brand new today. All right, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So th this is a new one I'm working on. This is the design. It's a it represents the million mask movements an M. But um, this is the mask, and the words I wrote today were funny, and I wrote serious slash hard work. I'm serious about hard work and caring. Um, and I wrote funny first. I mean, I I don't know. Funny first came came. I haven't used funny in a long time because I've been so busy. I haven't really had a whole lot of time to laugh lately. <laughs> I like, I love laughing. I love, but because I've been working so hard, I'm just kind of like it nose to the grind. But something maybe maybe he's trying to sing today, which is actually pretty funny for me because if you know me, like Shanti doesn't sing. Like I'm not going to be singing for no TikTok. I'm going to be dancing. I ain't going to be doing none of that stuff. But the fact that I did that out of it's not even planned is actually. It was kind of hilarious, and I don't know why. I don't know where it came from. So I'm gonna explore that today. But hard work, serious, caring. I think caring. Um, sometimes the caring, I think, and it's interesting. Caring is last. I don't think I show caring last, but I think more people see the hard work, and so sometimes, um, people don't like young people in my work. They sometimes hesitate to like reach out when they're thinking I'm so busy. I'm like, dude, I'm never too busy. Just call me. Just text me. Like you know, like I think because I'm always busy that sometimes it seems like I'm too busy, but I care way more about people than any of my business, you know? Um, but that's, 
That's the front. That's the, how the front shows up. The things I let people see. Cool. And yeah. we're going to have to do a dance now to unpack that. <laughs> I would rather sing. I'd rather sing. I mean, I, I definitely ain't dancing. I got a bad hip. I got a bad hip right now, which is actually, oh, wow, ironically. Ironically, you just said that. It'll come up when we get to the back. But yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not, if I'm, if I'm going to, I'm going to be in the middle. I'm going to be in the middle. If I dance, if I go to a wedding, Mm-hmm. People be like, you know, they'd be at that, that wood thing on the floor. People trying to, you know, hey, come on. And we dance on the edge. I said, let's go to the middle. I'm not dancing on the edge. I have everybody watch me dance. I'm going to go to the middle always. <laughs> like Surround that. me. <laughs> Hide me. Get me in here. It's also like, give me that love, though. It's, well, there's energy in there, too, right? I just don't want I just, I just don't have no skills. So I just want like, let's go to the middle. I'll move. I'll move. I'm down to move, but I'm, there's no skills in connected. Just just gravity in a in a little beat, you know. Sometimes the middles where the break break <laughs> break boys start breaking up and create the dance competition. So maybe maybe uh, and this then I'm is out. waiting and to then come I'm out. out. <laughs> oh, they do. And then I'm like, I'm out. I'm like, yep. Let's let's move on ourselves to the out because I'm definitely not gonna be dancing in the middle of a circle. You're like pee break. It's a potty time. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Let me go get a drink. Oh man, oh man, that's funny. That's <laughs> that's funny. Well, you're first. You're up. You're up. You got the oh, front oh. now. The front right. now. So this is my line mask. Oh wow, nice. Um, the words I put a whole lot of stuff now. So showing up daily, no matter what. Uh, confidence, leading with love. You know, I have to embody what I do. Integrity, and that I'm a work in progress. Anything that you want to say about any of those that you feel comfortable saying? Front facing, I mean, you know, some of them are obviously your characteristics, but I would just say this is who I am. It's not a character or a persona. These are like values and things. So I, I get, you know, getting to this point, you know, this is me. This is what I am. This is who I am. So awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, brother. All right, well, let's take a deep breath and we're going to go to the back then. <sighs> okay. So here's the back. Um, grief, health worries, and become, or it says, get more efficient. Get more efficient. I'm, I'm really, so I'll start with uh, grief. Um, and as I was writing, I was like, how do you spell grief? I, I think I run away from grief so far, I don't even think I know how to spell it. Like I, I, I think I'm dealing with some grief. I lost my cousin a couple of days ago, oh, and um, oh man, it's a, uh, it was a shock. And it's he's working on his PhD. He is, yeah, you know, I just oh man, we talked right before New Year's. Like I, it's almost like a one of those shocking ones. You know, my grandmother passed a couple of years ago. Um, she was 98. She was on hospice for one month, so I knew it was coming. So I had a little yeah. time to prepare, even though it can never be prepared. But um, I, I've been suspending her grief, and I really decided this month that I was gonna start doing some work on it because it's actually it's only it's only hurting me by not really fully processing it. And as soon as I started processing hers, then his comes, and I'm like, God, dog it. And so, you know, being busy every day, trying to get stuff done, trying to be a social entrepreneur, running a nonprofit. And then trying to make time for myself, it seems so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. complicated. I don't, I don't usually focus on my stuff. I'm always trying to work on others, uh, not work on others, but help others. You know, so putting ourselves to the side in yeah. the name of being in service, because being in service is one of the most beautiful things we can do as humans. Yeah, but there's two sides where being in service goes wrong. One. For the show, the accolades, and an expectation, or two, ignoring stuff going on with you so we can hide it by being in service to others. 100%. 100%. And that's the thing with health worries, right? Like, I am, when you said dance, I'm like, oh, yeah. I I like to dance. If I went to a wedding today, I would probably not dance. I'm like, my my hip is in pain, Mm. and I'm like, oh, I got to get that taken care of. Oh, I got to get this insurance thing taken care of so I can go to get it taken care of. And it's kind of like, just like, okay, get more efficient is that context of that too. Like, okay, when am I going to stop? I got to call the people in the, in, in the daytime. So I got to stop something in work. I got to make time. 
And it feels like every minute is just like filled with stuff to do. And I've oftentimes, so it feels like that I, that I let things pile up, not because I'm trying to be irresponsible of my health, mm-hmm. but because I'm at work every day and I got things to do to make this nonprofit keep running. And it often seems more important, although I know that without your health, you can't do anything. Intellectually, I know that I got to get this thing, insurance taken care of so I can go to the doctor and take care of this hip. Yeah. I know that. I'm smart enough to know that. And then it gets to the realities like, oh, but we've got this grant due. We've got this grant report due. And I got this thing. And so it always, so it's it's just making my, locking in intelligence with also self-care and believing that I deserve the time to take care of me too. And I think oftentimes it's, it's connected to that. I mean, we all innately know everything that we should do. It's just we quiet that voice and mm. make other things more important. It's always interesting why, because like having these conversations, I mean, I can say all kinds of things right now. And then I'm always in the back like, but why don't we say it to ourselves? Mm. (laughs) Right? It's like, oh, yeah, I know. Because it's very easy to say, hey, Ashanti, if you don't take care of you and your health, the nonprofit and everything you're doing is going to fall apart if you can't keep it up on your shoulders. So it's like, okay, we know this, but... I still need to push through and keep it on my shoulders and hopefully this hangs out a little bit longer. It's like, yeah, where, where can we be more efficient, pick the right time? Because we're always running out of time. That's right. You know, I That's get right. it. I get it. So, mm, yeah. Yeah. So, I will be not, I'll be dancing today, but hopefully uh, in the next time I'm, we have a conversation, you'll be like, how'd that go? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed and I'm healthy and I'm ready to dance somewhere in the middle. That's what... That's it. We'll stick with the shoulder shimmy. <laughs> I can do the shoulder. Just, <laughs> that's, that's, you're uh, that's it. That's it. Appreciate it, man. Your your turn. Your your oh, back. Oh, oh, my turn. I wrote okay. I wrote some I wrote some stuff. Okay, okay. Hmm. Um, let me see. The emotional roller coaster, right? Where I mean, there's ups and downs. There's lots of highs. There's lots of lows and everything in between. And sometimes that low is like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to watch Netflix all day or lay on the couch or like do nothing and just ask the wrong questions. Or you're such a high, you're like, let's keep going. Let's plowing through. So so part of that is, you know, I'll show up stoically. I'm not going to show what end I'm on. You know, I can't hide everything. It's still on my face. But for the most part, you can mask I'm in a funk right now. You know, the good thing is when you do the work, you can get out of these things sooner. You could be more self-aware of them. It's still going to happen. Like it's an ever growing process until I'm gone and move on to the next phase of my life. But it's real and it's there. That leads into, am I doing enough? So talk about doing it all. Like I've got so much things going on. I'm also a father. My kid's turning three. I've got a baby girl coming. I've got to be a husband. Like, am I showing up enough in all of this? And we can't get 100% in everything. So this leads into the next thing. What am I being perceived as? Right? There's three fears that, that I believe in. One is the fear of success or the fear of failure. One, two. Those are typical. People know that. But the, the last fear, it's the fear of judgment. Like, am I being perceived the way I want to be perceived? Am I showing up the way I want to show? What, how are people taking that in? And that's, that's for us to be better communicators and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, chasing perfection. I say imperfectly perfect, imperfectly perfect, mm-hmm. imperfect. But still, there's that, you know, I'm still the firstborn. There's still some stuff there. I'm still the eldest. I had to be perfect. And chasing perfection for that thing ahead. How am I being judged? Is on a painting. Did I spend the time to really make sure that line is as perfect as I want it? And we're our own worst critic. So if I think of it to the most and judge it the most, then it'll be okay for others. But where, where do I surrender and say, okay, it's perfect? Mm. And uh, the healing process. We're always healing. You know, and leaning into healing and all of that. Thank you, thank you for that. It's so beautiful. I I heard you say that you were the oldest. I'm 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 also the oldest. Um, I was the first of four. How did that shape? Did, I mean, I heard you saying like helping helping those family, father, husband, all those roles. How does that 
how did that play growing up, being the oldest? How did that play into who you are today? In one capacity, you know, looking back and taking inventory, it's like we weren't allowed to mess up. And if we messed up, like it's like your brother's looking up to you. You have to be perfect. Do not disappoint us. You are the mm-hmm. example. This is all on you. I'm like, so a little bit of that, like I'm the parent? Like, be, I'm like, I can't mess up? I'm a kid too. So there, there was some of that, you know? And he obviously, your little brother looks up to you and he's like, I want to be you. You're my hero. Let me play with you. So it's like the double edged thing there. And I'm sure that has led into a lot of this perfectionism and getting it right and all these things. So that's where I see that weighing in. I mean, besides that, I was first to everything. Luckily, I didn't get a lot of hand-me-downs, right? It's funny because my son, we have a baby girl coming, and we're obviously saving some things for her uh, that are in good condition. But I already find myself like, I don't want her to have the used everything. I didn't experience that. I wasn't the youngest or the middle. And I know people do experience that, and I hear it. But at the same time, we bought really nice, good things. So it could last. So it's like, where's the balance? Like right now we want to get him his first bike with pedals. And we're like, we need to get something neutral that's cool for Remy and will be cool for my daughter River. You know, a neutral (laughs) color that could, because they're only going to use it for so long. It's not like they're going to, they have enough time. It's not an eight-year-old that they're going to trash the bike. It's a three-year-old that may ride it for a year. And then when she's two, she'll be able to use it. So there's like three years of this thing not being really used. You know? so it's like trying to figure all this stuff out. So anyway, that's the thought process there. Right on, right on. I mean, imagine like, and now all the other things have to come into that, right? All the, the all the other parenting things, like the schools and the daycares or however those things kind of play out. Like I was thinking, I saw this kid in the store. I was in Starbucks the other day, and I, because I don't have kids, but I've I've helped raise. I've mentored hundreds of students, but I also raised some teenagers. So when they were in high school, so that's a different age. But I was watching this kid run back over to the little thing as the the little thing where all the drinks were, all the colorful things. And the kid kept running back over, and the the mom kept going, and then the dad would go, and then the mom would go. They would take turns, and I was like, they can never stop. Like they get like they have to keep an eye on this human who is exploring all the things in the world, like touching this, eating this touching this eating this like like they can't stop they can't like if when i kids awake they got to be awake and it's almost like oh wow i had just watching it i was like because i was sitting facing this way they kept coming from this way i'm like why do they keep running and i realized oh they're running after this kid and i was like oh man like i had to text a couple of my my friends who are young parents of young kids i'm like i just saw this parent run like seven times back and forth to this thing they wanted to give the kid a little freedom but they had to keep going to get them Right. They couldn't just let them be on their own. Right. And I was like, oh, wow. I, you can't stop, can you? There's no off switch. There <laughs> is no downtime. There is no today. I don't feel like it. Like, it doesn't matter how my day is. I walk home. Daddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Let's go. I could have had the worst day ever, but he doesn't know. And I can't be like, yo, dude, I'm having a bad day. Leave me alone. Like, they don't get that. Maybe when he's 21. But not right now. And then it's go, 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 throw me, throw me, do, 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 all over. And then throw in the dog that you see jumping around and they <laughs> compete with each other because he's our firstborn and he's jealous of the other one. And like, there's going to be a third one. It's going to be pure chaos, oh, you know? And, and with one, it's like, hey, babe, wife, your turn. Okay, <laughs> dad, your turn. With two, it's not like it's like you want to hold the one that's more active or the one that needs. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see what's going to happen, but it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, it's not for everyone. You know, I wouldn't, I never thought I'd have kids. You know, I I didn't have this burning desire. It's like, I am a man. I need to sow my seed. I never had that, but you find the right partner. You have the combos and like, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's harder, but holy cow, it's another world of exploring love. Oof. I was just going to ask you about the love because it's on your jacket and I think it's on the wall behind you. Like it's everywhere. Yeah. Tell, tell, can you tell me? And that's, and that's the 10 foot, the 10, not 10, not 10 foot, sorry, 10 story mural in Oakland. Love me now before I'm gone. Wh- where did, when did love become a big theme for you? 
I would say love is apparent from birth to the majority of humans, right? You're born into love. There's a few circumstances. Let's not worry about the odd. Let's, let's think about the masses, right? So it's like we, we are here to love and be loved. That is it. And somewhere along the way in our journey, we lose our way. And part of that is in America, love is more about romanticism right? Rom-coms, Valentine's Day, roses and chocolates. And like, those are, those are gifts. Those are acts of service that is showing that you love someone. Yes, but more in the romantic sense, you know, or I love my Jordans or I love this jacket or I love this art. That's another thing. And I think what we're doing wrong is really realizing the magnitude and the power of love, you know, and many could call love God. God is love. Mother Nature, the universe, another energy, whatever anyone really believes in. And I don't think there's a definition, not an appropriate definition. The dictionary says it's a strong feeling of affection. Mm. Does that sound like the definition of love? <laughs> no. That to me sounds like the definition of attraction. <laughs> but, uh, you know... I'd say it's undescribable or undefinable, and it is what you need it to be in the moment. I also do say that it's not a sacrifice. You don't have to sacrifice yourself to show love. There's moments where you sacrifice, but I also think when you sacrifice, you're showing your humanity, right? Because uh, people would compare Jesus' sacrifice or Mother Teresa or Gandhi as sh ways of showing love, and that is a way of showing love, but it, it's more than that. And it's choosing love and leaning into love. Love is looking in the mirror and looking at yourself and saying, I love you. Mm. So somewhere along the line, I've went all over the place in my journey, lost that, found it, found myself in an auditorium yelling, I am love in front of 300 people one day. I've always been an artist. So I like drawing four letter words, a lot of tagging and graffiti style artwork when I was growing up. So I just started using it just like some of the other four letter words, time is another word I used a lot, um, you know, or ticker around time, tick, tick, tick. Mm. So things like that, power, that's a five-letter word. So like just strong words. Yeah. And ultimately, I'm trying to simplify this human journey into we either operate out of love or we operate out of fear. And that's it. I'm not saying that fear is bad, but living from fear is bad. And if you turn on the TV, all you see is politics and pandemics and racism and gender battles and you name it. So, of course, we're going to think, oh, this world sucks. There's no love in it. And you're living in fear. You're in this state of fear and stressed out and anxiety and cortisol and all that. But what if we decide instead of reacting to that, we start responding and asking questions like, how can I come from love? How can I choose love? How can I take mm. action? Right? Love is a verb. It's an active choice. And instead of reacting, let me respond. Mm. In most cases, like start with loving yourself and continue to go from there. So it, it's this long journey. I'm trying to make it simple and creating a culture of love is what I say here. And the more we could come from that, I truly believe that we can unite as a whole. And it's not about agreeing with each other. We do not have to agree. We don't even have to understand each other, right? Everyone's got different views, cultures, agendas, and all of that. But if we could align that we're human and that we're seeking love and willing to give love, let's start there. Mm. Man, that's, that's so huge. I appreciate that so much. And I think what I'm seeing with our young people in our work is that idea of like, and, I, and have, I'm a middle school club going to start in a couple of hours. So when I, today they're, they're making a thing for somebody in their life who they love. They have to do this little hand print and they're going to draw it in color. And they started on it last week and they're like, uh, I was like, I was, this is for somebody in your life that you love. But it, I told them it can't be, it can't be like one of these little girls at the school, right? I'm, I'm down with that. You can pay your own money for that. This is for somebody you want to honor either it could be a cousin. It could be whatever, but it can't be like, I'm not here to pay for your little dating life, you know? And mm -hmm. um, some of them were like, 
why I can't? I said, if you want something for that person, buy it yourself. I don't have a problem with you giving to them, but you're not going to use this resource. This resource is for you to honor somebody else, right? And I think, right, I think ultimately this idea of like, what does love mean to you? I think I'm going to ask him that today in our check-ins. What, is, what does love mean to you? Like, what is it? And I think sometimes our middle schoolers are, you know, there it's a complex time of life, right? So as you've shared a lot of your story here and we're closing up, what is a message that you have to maybe to anyone, it could be to any age person, but, any, but I'm primarily thinking about youth in our communities. What is the message you have for them around what you experienced today with this mask being the first time you've done it about love, about any topic that you feel comfortable, but what is a message as we wrap it up um, that you will, will want to share? You know, there's a point when you're really young and you don't care. And then there's a point, maybe puberty, maybe a little older in high school, college, 20s, where you care about everything and you take it personal and care too much. If we could hold on to that don't care, you know, I'm in my 40s now and you hear people in their 50s and their 60s, you go back to not giving an F like when you were young, when you get old again. But there's this middle part of life, which is like the most fulfilling, right? You, you find your career, you build your family, you travel, you do. If we didn't give an F here, imagine how much more fulfilling our life would be. So I, I would just hope like hold on to who you are as long as you can and keep holding on to it because the masks are going to come on, right? There's code switching. There's all kinds of things that we do to feel accepted, to feel worthy, to feel belonging, to feel like we matter, but we don't need to do that. You know, if you don't belong in a club or a hole or a job, maybe you truly don't belong there. Don't square peg round hole it mm. and go go find where you do belong and i think too many of us don't find where we actually belong and just try to belong anywhere so that's why it's so energetically exhausting like when i was in finance i did good in finance but i hated it i hated it i don't wear suit and tie anymore i can't i got ptsd you invite me to your wedding i'm going in some cool outfit or leather jacket like i'm not going in a suit and tie <laughs> so that's it just be you it's easier being yourself trust me and i can say this from my own struggles of trying not to be me because it's exhausting to try to be something else you know and at the end of the day the truth is people are attracted to your difference and uniqueness if we were all the same why do we need more of us same people around us Ruben, brother, I am so thankful for you. I thank you for your words and for being on this show. Um, would you let folks know how they can find some of the art, your, your, find your work, find you, your art, or any way you want people to connect with the things you're working on or any projects you're working on you want people to know about? Yeah, but mostly, I mean, my website, Instagram, you could just Google my name, stuff will show up. You know, we just did this real cool project ongoing project with the nfl season one we did kickoff we just dropped hats they say choose love six different teams niners for you bear area folks the raiders did move to vegas we did do raiders but uh they're in the super bowl this weekend but anyway ruben not the sandwich don't spell it wrong it's r-u-b-e-n-r-o-j-a-s.com awesome well, we'll we'll come up with that in the show notes and maybe we may even have to put out a couple of hats to show folks what they look like. I, I don't have one, but I'm going I'm to find one. So here's one of the Rams ones. Hey, you're in LA. There it is. Okay. Yeah, choose love the inside. These are with new era in the NFL, but yeah, there's always cool stuff going on. This jacket like this are on my website, hoodies. At the end of the day, if we lead with love, continue to show people love, you know, I know you have the, the million mass project. At some point I had the million t-shirt project. And the thought was a million people wear love. Yeah. And let's say on average, you walk by 30 people, just the average. I think that's a small number. There's probably people that don't walk by anyone for a really long time. So let's pick 30. So if 30 people see love, that's 30 people times a million. That's 30 million. Do you not think it's more contagious? Like, Oh, instead of being, snipey at my barista that's making me coffee because you're running late to work and there's a long line and it is what it is just say hey you know i'm running late but i'm going to show you some love and grace i'd appreciate if you can like 
hurry up a little, but I'm here waiting instead of saying, hey, hurry up, I'm late. late." You know, that's that's love and fear. That's the respond versus react. So I truly believe that if you continue to see the message of love, the murals, everywhere I put this thing, you're just reminded that, oh, I can choose love. I can live through love. I can lean into love. I can put the lens of love on. Like there's, anyway, you get it. Ooh, ooh. Well, I'm, I'm I'm thanking you, and I'm gonna my middle schoolers. I'm gonna I'll let you know how it goes with them today. We're gonna talk about love today, which is gonna be probably ironic for middle school boys. So, brother, thank you. Uh, we're gonna put all that in the show notes, folks. Ruben and I showed our masks here publicly. You don't have to show yours publicly. You can make it anonymously at millionmask.org. And um, Ruben, again, thank you for being a part of the Taking Off the Mask podcast. Thanks for having me. Thank you, brother. Bye, folks. See you next time. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is produced by Ryan Louie and graphics by Kelly Wong. Guests are managed by Dan Paloma, and the podcast is edited by Samuel Matingo. We'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of the creation of this podcast. And for every guest that has been a part of the show, you are now a part of the Taking Off the Mask family. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is brought to you by the Ever Forward Club. And if you like what you've heard today, please subscribe, write a five-star review, and share this with someone. We look forward to having more conversations that matter. And please remember, there's more to you than anybody can see by just looking at you.